Kalashnikov and uh, here we are another week, another video of me rambling over some drawing stuff. Um, if you like this kind of videos, please let me know, give me a like, hit the subscribe button with a little bell and please leave me a comment down below letting me know if you found this one interesting and what else would you like me to discuss next. So today we're going to be speaking about bumps. Um, bump, well, devamp is a cultural trope. It's one of my favorite uh, uh, tropes. And as you can see here, I'm working in my allegory series and I'm essentially working with the concept of uh, language reappropriation. Um, language reappropriation was something that came from the second wave of feminism in the 60s and 70s from... Um, academic feminists in the US, but there's reason to believe that it was actually started as all things uh, by black, uh, trans and sex worker activists in the United States. So what is reappropriation? Reappropriation is when you take a word that has been used, in a, used as an insult or as a slang against a particular collective and um, you use it as an empowering kind of like you give it empowering uh, qualities, so essentially you redefine the, the concept. A famous words that, that have been reappropriated are uh, bitch, dyke, fag, and of course a bunch of uh, words that belong to the African-American vernacular, which obviously as I am white, I, am, I have no business speaking about. So going into the history of BAMP, uh, the, the concept of BAMP was born with the uh, cinema in the around 1915, I believe, was the first time it was used. It was in a, used in a movie called A Fool There Was, where um, Feta Barra played a seductive woman uh, who is referred to as a vampire in the credits. And uh, BAMP is short for vampire, and we all know how much people in the 20s loved to make short words out of things. So that's where BAMP came from. Uh, BAMP and Femme Fatale can be used more or less um, interchangeably. So, you know, you can use one or the other, but today, for <laughs> this video's purposes, we're going to focus on BAMP. And I also think it's very interesting, uh, this idea of, of the bump, because uh, there's a lot of examples throughout history of um, highly sexual women feeding on men's energy or men's sexual energy as vampires. So I think there's like a very strong link between the femme fatale and the actual vampire. Uh, so yeah, essentially, if you go to ancient history in the Western culture, you have Lilith, Mohini, Circe, Medea, Clytemnestra, um, Cleopatra, Delilah, Jezebel, Salome. So, you know, there's a bunch of uh, women that we could speak about as being femme fatales even before um, we we got a temp bump from, from cinema. Um, this kind of figures had like a, they were not so popular during the Enlightenment because men were supposed to rise above their lowly passions but they definitely made a huge huge comeback uh, with the Romantic period uh, especially in the words of um, John Keats works such as Lamia, um, La Belle Dame Sans Merci and then you'd have like Carmilla uh, by Le Fenum, Brides of Dracula um, Marcus de Sade actually may, uh, wrote the first instance in which we see a femme fatale, a bump, that kind of like doesn't have an awful ending um, in uh, Juliet. So I, I've, I've always found Juliet, it's, to this day it remains one of my favorite works by de Sade, and I've always found it very, very interesting. And of course, as you guys know, I'm a huge profile it, um fan, and they often use the classic personifications of the femme fatale as a subject in the paintings. So yeah, as you can see, it's been a fashionable trope for a very, very long time. And right in the 20th century, with the start of cinema, we would see actresses such as, you know, the aforementioned uh, Theodore Barra, but also Alice Holster, Helen Gardner, uh, Olga Petrova. And then we would have, you know, later, during the 40s and the 50s, we would have... Um, Elizabeth Scott and uh, Jane Greer 
you know, uh, And then in the a little bit later we would have Ada Gardner and Lana Turner. Later on in the eighties and the nineties, Kathleen Turner, uh, Sean Young, Sean Stone in Basic Instinct, it's a fantastic um example of a femme fatale of a bump. And finally, uh, my one of my favourite um femme fatales or bumps of all time would be Rosamund Pike in Gone Girl more recent example. So as we've uh, talked about, as we've discussed, the history of the bump is very tied to the history of uh, sex workers. Essentially, in the the first apparition of the bump in cinema, uh, she performs this uh, dance of the vampire, and this is essentially uh, an erotic act. So uh, obviously, Bumps and sex workers uh, have often been used interchangeably in in media, especially because in Western culture there's this um, narrative around sex workers preying off the energy of men, which suits the stereotype of the of the bump. A bump is essentially a woman that uh, has so much sexual power that they can bring any man to their knees and they will be the damnation of said man. You know, uh, they are often presented in contrast with the wife stereotype. And what's very, very interesting is that often uh, they have literal supernatural powers. But, you know, in the late latest uh, last, like, 10 or 15 years we've seen less and less of this kind of like supernatural powers thing which was a theme during the 80s if you are a fan of all the you know the hammer movies and all the lesbian vampire movies made in italy during the 70s and the 80s you've seen this trope like a thousand times i love those movies i love me some vampire chicks evil vampire chicks it is so yeah essentially you have this connection between females using their sexuality to their own advantage and that being understood in western media and western culture as something so dangerous that it might must be a supernatural thing and you know uh you know i don't like to stay within the confines of like um western culture so when i was doing research for this video i and i i found this wonderful essay uh, called The Trope of the Courtesan in Urdu Hindi Film, and I will leave this linked down below. It's by John Caldwell, and I have very little idea about, like, Urdu Hindi uh, cinema. I have very little idea about Sanskrit histories and, like, Sanskrit poetry, but it turns out that in the early um, film efforts in in this particular kind of film, it was only the courtesans that were allowed to dance, which means, you know, often meant that the bump was the only one allowed to dance. Uh, so I find it very, very interesting that it's often bumps and um, sex workers in general, the ones who are allowed to do these more kind of like more outrageous uh, acts, such as, you know, wearing makeup, dancing in the Urdu Hindi movies, etc. And then once the sex working beat of society that's portrayed in cinema normalizes it, the rest of the women are allowed to do that. And apparently, ever since uh, more normal heroines have started to to you know dance, the like the portrayal of the courtesan has been less and less common. So yeah, it's very interesting, and of course we could, uh, you know, jump into a discussion about like uh, whore with heart of gold kind of like trope. But let's keep this um, relevant to to this the history of at hand, which is the bump. So yes, uh, again we have this whole discussion about women, women using their sexuality, women using their sexuality not to please a man or to form a family, but to further their own agenda, and how this is once and again portrayed as something very, very negative for for patriarchy. And um, yeah, so essentially, bumps have always been very attractive to me, and I wanted to do this allegory series. I had already done the beach one, and bump you know it's as a golf girl it's some stereotype that has always been very close to my heart i've always loved bumps um it always 
pains me enormously when I see them in, in cinema and they never get like a happy ending for themselves. Um, don't get me wrong, I don't intend for them to end with a, with a male protagonist, but you know, I, I don't want him to die. And uh, here we could speak about how bums are often portrayed or used as a portrayal for sex workers and how sex workers, the same as lesbians and women of color and uh, trans women, are often, they, they often find an untimely death on cinema and, you know, in a lot of like media portrayals. So I wanted to reclaim Bump and I wanted to to reclaim it with all its power, which is why I, I chose this acronym. I think um, the whole idea of Bump lends itself very, very well to the, the femme stereotype or the feminizing stereotype. And I think it's very interesting for femmes everywhere to be able to uh, reappropriate not only this word but all the sexual power and prowess that uh, exists behind it. So yeah, um, that's all I have for you guys today. I hope that you've enjoyed this uh, video. It was a little bit more rambly than usual. You know, there's like a lot of ground to cover here. As usual, you'll find all the essays linked down below if you'd like to continue investigating on your own. Uh, please hit the like button if you enjoyed the video. Subscribe, uh, hit the bell, blah, blah, blah. Follow me on other social media. I'm Klashnikov everywhere else. And uh, leave me a comment down below because I'd love to know what you think about this. I hope you have a wonderful week and stay safe and stay interesting. Stay interesting. <laughs>